Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna look at another fluid problem for physics two. All right, um, this problem is related to Bernoulli's equation. Um, let's take a look at it. So here's a problem. Uh, they're giving us a pipe with some liquid flowing in it. Um, actually it's water, so we can take that as water. And they're telling us that we have a radius, R1, at this location. They label these points actually A, and over here on this end, this is point B, okay? And so we have R1 and R2. We can see R2 is smaller than R1. Uh, they also tell us, I'm gonna put it to the side, but our liquid is moving at VA, and over here it's moving at VB, okay? There's a height difference of H from the center of each end of the pipe. And they ask which of the following correctly gives a correct reasoning about the water's properties as it moves from A to B. Okay. So before I even read these, um, this is a Bernoulli's equation problem. All right. So let's pull out our physics two reference table. Let's look at Bernoulli's equation. I'm going to rewrite it over here, but I just want to make sure you know where to find it. Here's Bernoulli's equation. I'm going to transpose that over here. We're going to take a look at it, uh, dive a little bit into it so that we get a better understanding of Bernoulli's equation. And hopefully we can, um, we'll call this Y1. So hopefully we can use this in other scenarios, not just a pipe that changes its diameter and changes its height. Uh, so squared, okay, P2 plus rho g y2 plus one half rho v2 squared. Okay, so before I even plug in anything from our problem, right, we could plug in our va and vb. I mean, really, these are ones and twos and a's and b's, so it's not super um, important to put that in here right away. Um, I want to Think about this problem a little bit, okay? Um, what is Bernoulli's equation all about, okay? It's actually a conservation of energy equation. It's telling us that the energy that the fluid has at this location is conserved. It still has the same amount of energy at this end. And you might look at this and say, I don't see energy here. I see some things that look kind of like energy. Like, like this kind of looks like one half mv squared, but we have a density here. And this kind of looks like mgh, right? Our, our potential energy, maybe I'll label these, right? This is potential energy due to gravity, kind of. This is what? Kinetic energy, kind of. We'll see what, what's going on here. Is this an energy? What are the units of pressure? Let's dive into the units here. What are the units here? Units of pressure, and therefore the units of all of these, because we're adding them together, right, is force per unit area. So the units end up being newtons per meters squared, okay? But let's think about energy a little bit. What do we, if we're really trying to say this is conservation of energy, where do I see energy in here, right? And, hmm, a joule, what is a joule? This is a separate thing, I'm thinking about this. I'm just going through my thought process. What is a joule? A joule, the way I think about this, when I, whenever I'm trying to derive units, Whenever I wanna know what makes a joule, think of an equation that gives me joules. So I know that work is an equation to tell me how many joules of work something is, is. So I think of this, work is measured in joules. How do I find work? It's a force times a distance. So that gives me my base units of a joule. That's just a little shortcut. Maybe you know it already. I always go back and I think about these kind of things. So a joule is actually just a Newton times a meter. 
Oh, okay. All right. That, that kind of makes sense. Now, if I wanted to take this, this is my pressure, don't forget, right? This is a um, Pascal. And if I wanted to take this and I said, well, how could I throw in some joules into this? Where could I get some joules? Well, uh, let me, before I put my equal sign, let's say this is what we're going to do. We're going to take this fraction and we want what we said, newtons times meters. So let's make sure we multiply the top of that fraction by meters. But you're not allowed to do that unless you do the same to the bottom. So we end up with newtons times meters on top over meters cubed. Ah, hopefully you're seeing a little something come out of this. So we have joules per meter cubed, which means this is an energy per unit volume. That's what every one of these are. This is an energy per unit volume. This is a potential energy per unit volume. This is a kinetic energy per unit volume. So pressure is nothing more than energy per unit volume. Okay? So as we read through our choices on this problem, they ask us which of the following gives correct reasoning about the water's properties as it moves from point A to point B. Let's read them. Since water's linear momentum remains constant and the density of the water increases at point B, the velocity of the water decreases. So first off, um, how could the density of the water increase? Well, that would mean that the molecules are getting squished closer together and in all of our physics problems and fluids, we're assuming incompressible fluids, okay? These, these fluids can't be squished, okay? So that one's out. We're gonna, we're gonna throw that one to the side. Um, the, choice B, the increase in gravitational potential energy of the Earth, uh, sorry, water Earth system is equal to the decrease in the water's kinetic energy. Okay, so that's kind of just saying if we, if we think about that from our Bernoulli equation, we're going to get, you know, if this is, this is situation A, this is the beginning, this is B later on, we're looking at potential energy. They're saying this potential goes up. Would you agree? You should, right? Height is increased, so this goes up. But they're telling us if that goes up, this has to go down by the same amount. Now, it could if the pressure is the same up there. But does it have to? No. Actually, this could go down just a little bit, and our pressure could go down a little bit to make up for that the two decreases in that energy density add up to be the same as that increase in energy uh, due to potential energy. So they don't have to, they could be equal, but they don't have to be. Okay, let's see. Uh, choice C, I'm going to skip. It's the correct answer. So let's look at another wrong answer and, and see why it's wrong. Uh, D is the kinetic energy of the water must remain constant. So the increased density of the water in the narrow part of the pipe results in a slower speed of water. So first off, does the kinetic energy have to remain constant. That would have that would mean that they have to well kinetic energy one half mv squared if it's constant either velocity is staying the same and our mass isn't changing or what they're trying to say is there's actually a change in the density of the liquid again we're never looking at changes in densities of liquid, so I would just eliminate that one right away. So really, it's a choice between B and C. We, we said why B is not the case. Let's read C, the correct answer, and see why it is correct. So C, the increase in gravitational potential energy of the Earth water system and the kinetic energy 
of the water causes a decrease in the water pressure. So they're saying that the Uh, the potential energy increased and velocity increased, which caused a decrease in pressure. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so hopefully that helps, gives you a little bit deeper understanding of Bernoulli's equation, gives you a couple of those tricks to help you uh, understand units a little better and realizing that Bernoulli is nothing more than conservation of energy um, but we're just looking at energy per unit volume. All right. Hope that helps. Take care. See you again on the next video.